Hey and welcome to the induction heater tutorial. So first of all, a good induction heater is not a day project. It will probably take about two months and I already did a small tech demo and just a proof of concept and I made a 25 seconds video on this but I want to make a professional induction furnace which I can use in my home lab and therefore it needs to be safe and it needs to have a proper casing and it has to have some heat insulation so that I can place crucibles in it to create some semiconductors or to simply melt down metal and do some castings. So. The first thing I actually did was going to Google and then to YouTube, watch dozens and dozens of induction heater tutorials and many of them I didn't understand. But over the time everything became clearer and I read on Wikipedia and I finally found a tutorial on RM Cybernetics with a schematic and I put this together and that was the induction heater you saw in my video but this design has a lot of drawbacks so I went ahead and tried to improve it so if you want to understand anything you do and this is absolutely necessary because if you don't understand what you do you can't make changes because you always have to customize your induction furnace for your purposes. And you can't just copy one because you won't be 100% satisfied. So you have to understand the basics to modify the, your induction furnace and to make something that perfectly fits your need. And I am now going to do to make several videos and in this video there will be actually three parts first i'll introduce you a circuit simulator called lt spice 4 and it's totally free and it's very easy to use and therefore good for beginners and circuit simulation is basically the first step in your induction heater because you can't buy components for hundreds of dollars and try out thousands of circuit designs until you find the one that works. So you have to simulate it and then you have to adapt all the component values. Finally, you get a schematic with all values and properties and then you build the circuit in reality. And that will be the content of the next video. So in this video, I'll introduce you in the circuit simulator. And then I'll show you the RM cybernetic circuit. And finally, I'll present you my improved version of it. And if you want to jump, I'll post a link right now up here that you can simply jump over the introduction of the circuit simulator and you can jump over the RM cybernetic schematic as well and you then you finally come to the improved version. Additionally, I will tell you something about the properties of the most basic components. So the circuit simulator has basically a menu up here and you go simply to file and click new schematic to create such gray background and you can save here and print and print preview and there are some other circuits I already designed and I can say it's reliable so it did its job always. I already created a new schematic and two others and if you want to start you go to edit and then you have here some basic components you can draw wires and place ground 
ground is always connected to the negative point of your power supply and I think it's basically useless in the simulator. Until now it was just there, but make sure you connect it to the negative of your power supply because it's absolutely zero its earth potential. If you want more components in here, click on component and there you have all the components this supports like a diet or LED or MOSFET, MPN bipolar transistor, voltage supply. So I would recommend to start off a voltage supply. You see it's pretty big now. You can use your mouse wheel. Yes, I have a pretty old mouse. To zoom in and out and place the voltage supply. The second thing I do is place the ground. It will be connected to zero. So if you right click it, you see there's such a hand. And if you now right click, you can edit the properties. And the voltage supply does also has an advanced property if you want some AC current or something like this. But I don't want. So I add this 9 volt and series resistance. A power supply without a series resistance can provide an infinite amount of current. And you don't want this because no real power supply provides an infinite amount of current. So if you're 9 volts and your power supply supplies 9 amps, you put in 1. And if your power supply only provides 1 amp at 9 volts, you put in 9. So a 9 volt block usually has series resistance of 10. The next component that is necessary for an induction heater is probably the MOSFET, but first I want to show you how to create a really simple circuit. So we pick out a resistor called RAS and we place them. Right click and you can select the resistor, but that, it's not necessary. Just type in a resistance like 470 ohms. You can add tolerance and watts, but it's not important. Another component, and I'll use an LED here. So LEDs are like diodes, you have to put them the right way in, and they emit light in comparison to diodes. And there's the simply rule. You put them in right if the arrow on the diode points from positive to negative. So the diode, uh, so the arrow simply shows where the current goes from positive to negative, and that's the arrow. So I place it. Some properties here. I pick some. Simply the first one. I hope this should work. Oh, I think it picked the diode and not an LED. Garbage. So here's one. That's an LED. And now we can start adding wires. So we have this corsair here. And let's connect plus to the LED. LED to resistor. Resistor to minus. Minus to ground. So that's it. That's our first circuit. So now you want to simulate it and you need some simulation properties. So I want to simulate this circuit for 10 milliseconds. M is milliseconds. My is microseconds. N is nanoseconds. P is picoseconds. And time to start saving data is if you don't want the start phase, you can add a value here, but I want to see all. And the time step I don't know if this does anything, but I always add zero, three zeros, and a one. And it's important that you click this because every power supply needs a few, few microseconds to get up its voltage. And this is important for most oscillating circuits as they are used in induction heaters to power up. And if you don't click this, they might not start to oscillate. In my case, this happened a few times. So make sure you click this.
click OK, then you get this window here and place it somewhere. It's just the thing you added. Now you can click Simulate and run. Here you see a few other circuits, but they are not important now. Important is this circuit. And you see, if you go near a wire, you get this red dot. And with this, you can check the voltage by clicking. See, the voltage rises, 9 volt, constant. Nothing will happen here. Here you can click because it's round and it's zero. Here you see the milliseconds. And if you click on an element and not on a wire, you can watch its current. So it's slightly under 90, slightly under zero milliamps, it's about 10. And that's what an average LED is, 13 volts. So beneath the LED and the resistor, we have a voltage of 6 point whatever volts, so the LED draw about 2.8 volts and the resistor draws 30 milliamps as well. That's it. So you can measure voltages and one thing more is if you click a wire double, you reset this to only show this wire and you click another wire once, you get this additional ring. So close this. Simulation is stopped now, and now we are ready for an induction heater circuit. So in an induction heater circuit, you have only very little components. You have a voltage source, a DC source, a resistor. Then you will have a diode, and diode you have a Schottky diet, and the difference between normal diet and these Schottky diets is that normal diets be uh, start to allow current to flow through them at 0 0.6 volt, and Schottky diets do at 0 0.2 volts, so they become conductive earlier. And they only conduct current in the way the arrow points, and in the other way around, they don't conduct current and until the voltage goes over this value. So if you place them the wrong way and the voltage is higher than 40 volts, they will start to conduct but they will be destroyed. And the maximum current that, that can go through them is mostly 0 0.2 or 1 amp or 0 0.3 and it's different for every diet. Another component you do have in the induction heater circuit will be a MOSFET and an NMOS. And this is basically an electronic switch. It's a transistor, but in comparison to a bipolar transistor, it does is not current controlled. It's voltage controlled. So if you apply a voltage here that is higher than the voltage that is applied here, which is the source, so the negative port, it will start to allow current to flow. So this transistor is without the voltage applied here non-conductive between these two ports. So here's plus, there you apply plus voltage, and here the minus voltage. This is called drain, and this is called source, and this thing at front is called gate. And there is no connection between gate and source, so you only apply voltage, and you have to make sure that you draw this voltage down if you want to turn it out. And this is not very complicated to use and the advantage of these is that they can switch high currents and there won't be a loss between gate and source. There are only two components left in an induction heater circuit. First, the capacitor. The capacitor can be compared to an energy storage like a battery. So if you apply a voltage to plus and minus, it will charge 
and you can flip plus and minus so they have no polarity and if they are charged they can deliver energy and they have a maximum voltage rated and they have a capacitance that is called farad and it's can be how much energy they can store in their electrical field then you have a coil and that's the last component and the coil is not a piece of wire and it's the most common mistake that you think it's a piece of wire but it isn't it's an energy storage as well and it does not store its energy in an electric field but in a magnetic field and therefore it has an inductance and of course it has a peak current so if you push too much current the wire will burn so the coils wire and the capacitor and the coil together form an electronic piece or a circuit and that's called oscillating circuit or LC circuit because the coil is called L and the capacitor is called C. So the coil's inductivity is measured in Henry and the capacitor's capacitance is measured in Farad. And the oscillating circuit is basically the main component and the core or the heart of every induction furnace because the current transmitting or energy transmitting over induction does only work at high frequencies and the oscillating circuit generates a high frequency and the higher the frequency and the higher the current the higher the induction voltage in the workpiece will be and the higher the induction voltage in the workpiece will be the more current can be transmitted to the workpiece over the magnetic field of the coil but you have to make sure that your power supply can supply the current that is drawn away from the coil so if the current if the power supply can supply less current than that is drawn, the circuit will stop oscillating. So your power supply has to be stronger than the current that is drawn outside of the coil. And this depends on the size of your workpiece. So here is actually an animation of an oscillating circuit, an LC circuit, and they are connected in parallel. You can connect them in series as well but in parallel it has better properties for induction heater such as current increase and that's why every induction heater chooses this design you see that if the capacitor is charged well current will flow through the coil and the coil will be charged with a magnetic field which then charges the capacitor again and this flipping between these two elements will generate a sinusoidal curve in the voltage as well as in the current and the curve of the voltage is displaced 90 degrees to the current curve but you'll see later maybe it's a bit complicated now the only thing you have to know is that if current goes through the coil it will store energy which will then go to capacitor which will be charged and this will continue forever if there wouldn't be any resistance in the wire which would convert electric energy into heat so if there would be no electrical resistance this would go forever but in reality there's always resistance so I think you've got the basics now and we can go to the induction heater circuit of RM Cybernetics now. Here it is. I just downloaded it from their website. They already put their credit here. So visit them, it's great. And I don't have to do extra credits. You see, ground at the transistors and here are all components that are necessary coils capacitor to transistors to shot key diodes to resistances and the power supply it's not included in the schematic so i used this schematic and imported it to lt spice and it's actually draw two 
here I just redrawed it with the values I got from the website. So I assume they're called to be about 2 micro farad and all the other values I could find. Only for the MOSFETs I use different values, but it does not play any role. I used 50 volts as stated, and I think we can get this a short simulating run. Wait, before I do this, this is actually the center tapped coil, so I split it in two roll, uh, in two coils and connected it. So this is the top half of the center tap coil and this is the bottom half of the center tap coil and these wells will be added together. And that are their two capacitors connected in parallel, so the capacitance will be doubled. Give this a run. So I measure over 10 milliseconds and look what's happening inside the oscillating circuit. And here it goes, the oscillation. Same for here. And let's take a look at the current. We'll peak up to 420 amps, now to 350 amps, and then we'll equal out. The same, it's in a capacitor. So, Maybe I want some higher resolution and start at 6 milliseconds. So I change the simulation command and I will start at 6M and I'll stop at 40M. This might take a while now. And give this a quick run. Yeah, I see this time. What you see here is not actually the oscillation you just see some kind of oscillation creation creation so it needs a time to level until it reaches its final oscillation level and the oscillation itself it's such a high frequency that you won't see it in this time scale but we can go to a higher time resolution soon oh but that's boring lame here nothing happens there's always some percentage scale but at the moment there is nothing looking bad okay it's ready and measure here and we see that at the center tab it peaks up to 44 volts and then levels at 24. And at the two MOSFET gates, which actually connected to ground, it goes up to about 90 volts and then levels at 45. So the voltage will be multiplied by 3. And you see that it starts to oscillate and then it levels up at a constant voltage. And Everything that is here colored blue is actually a high frequency oscillation and that's the resonance frequency of this circuit here. And let's take a look what frequencies are inside to do a few real transformation of the voltage. So our first peak is at about 1.5. 5 kilohertz and that's actually this frequency where it levels up and we have a much higher peak at about 150 kilohertz and that's the frequency that's completely blue here and we have multiplies of these and now we look at the actual oscillation frequency so I choose maybe one millisecond. So simulate, simulation command. I will start at one amp and we will go to 1200 in my Oh, sorry, wrong way. Oh. 
run off the simulation, it's done. And here you see actually the leveling up and these small peaks are the peaks that were was it's actually the plane that was completely blue in the last shot but now we have a higher time resolution and we see this many little peaks so they at the beginning they go from zero voltage which is which is ground potential up to 300 volts and let's take a look at the amperage at the same time the amperage is between 0 amps and minus 170 amps and plus 170 amps and this is a real sinus and at the 300 volt peaks it's at 107 amps and if you then touch the oscillating circuit Yes, you'll be totally electrocuted, burned, explode, whatever might happen to you. These are a lot of kilowatts that will go into you and will rip every atom apart in your body. So this is not safe. And I really don't recommend touching this. Additionally, these center tapped coils are really nasty because if you solder something to the center tap, uh, this wire to the center tap and it heats up you might lose connection here and then it will stop to oscillate additionally this schematic is a bit confusing and before i continue to my improvement i'll give you a simple explanation on how this works so this inductor coil here simply prevents the AC current that is oscillating between the coil and the capacitor, as you saw in the Wikipedia image, to draw back to your power supply and to level it down. So to give you an illustration what happens, if we remove it, first I have to edit simulation command, so we stop at 10 milliseconds, go at zero, so this is without any change. You see that it levels here with this high peak at the beginning. And if we look not at our oscillating circuit, but at our power supply, we see that we have here a peak and then it levels at a constant power of 15 voltage. So the power supply only has to provide high current here and then it will level to about null amps until about zero I'm sorry until you start to draw current to heat an object and if we remove this so we can simply put in one N that's basically nothing and run the simulation now we will see that we have an oscillation at exactly 40 volts so we don't have this high current uh, this high voltage peaks which seems to be an improvement, but if we look at our power supply, we do have these as well. And if we look at the amperage of the power supply, we see that we always draw high power. And if we look at the MOSFET power draw, we see that they also draw high power of all over the time. So this is super, super inefficient and is going to disturb the voltage of the whole electricity network this is connected so to prevent the ac from going out there and wasting our power and disturbing the network we choose the high values such like 2m which they used or 4m or 10m but you can use 1m as well so how does this work over these resistors the gate will be charged with plus 15 volts and both transistors will be open at the beginning this will allow current to shoot down to ground to ground over both pathways and both covers will be charged with a magnetic field and this magnetic field will then produce a voltage which charges the capacitor and starts the oscillation and this gives a drawback over the diodes to discharge the gauges the gates here so if basically the current here is lower 
then here to the oscillation this will discharge and the same for the other one and then those two start to open and close and this will support this oscillation and push it to 30 volts and this will be pushed further and further until it reaches its saturation point so both of these components are saturated either with magnetic or electric field. So I think you should have got it now. If you have questions, write it into the comments. We can go to the improved design I made. First of all, I did another arrangement and I reduced the voltage to 10 and put a serious resistance to 0 0.33 because my power supply can supply 30 amps. So I have 10 volts and maximum of 30 amps here. And there are the two transistors. Two diodes, I choose another ones with better breakdown voltages. So they can really stop the voltage that is inside here and prevent it from destroying the gates. I deferred the resistors simply because I do have them already, the 470 ohm resistors. And I still use 2M as choke to prevent the AC current from going out. But I heavily altered the capacitors and the coil. So first of all, what's a proper working coil for an induction furnace? Therefore I have this coil calculator here. So I want a height of 100 millimeters, which are 10 centimeters, and a diameter of 16 centimeters. And I want four windings and that gives me 2.3 micro Henry which are 2340 nano Henry so I added 2.4 my for the inductivity of this coil and I removed the second coil because it's not necessary to make this oscillate and it removes actually the center tap for the capacitors I choose 47 my basically because this is made up out of 10 independent 4.7 my capacitors to spread the large current in here of about 200 amps okay more 150 amps to all 10 equally so every of them will have 15 amps which won't burn these capacitors but of course i don't think they are rated for 200 amps so with 15 amps they work pretty fine instead of 150 and that's basically all so go and simulate the circuit the only drawback this circuit has that its resonance frequency is about 15 kilohertz so it's about 10 times less than the RM cybernetic circuit so you might hear this circuit working and it's making some noise but it shouldn't be too disturbing and as you see instantly this circuit does not have a voltage peak over 300 volts at its um, oscillation start its maximum peak at the beginning is at 48 volts and then it quickly levels to 30 volts so there won't be any danger if you touch it accidentally and you already see that the frequency is lower let's look at the current and the current is leveled between at about 150 amps at the end and at the beginning at about 200 amps and you might think this doesn't work because we have no real AC, we have just a current that oscillates between 0 volt and 30 volt or 50 volts. So for the induction voltage, we want to induct, uh, sorry, induce in this coil, only the current is necessary, not the voltage. So we do have a negative current and a positive current and a nice sinus curve. So our induction voltage curve will 
have basically the same shape, not the same values, but the same shape. So we will have a true AC voltage in our workpiece and we can induct. So the voltage is basically not very necessary for the induction, it's just to overcome the wire resistance in the LC circuit. Yeah, that's basically all for now. I hope you understood the principles or the principles of induction heaters and in the next video I'll start to pick out some components and make basic concept design for the induction furnace and leave the simulator and go to reality. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. See you soon.